Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton and Jock Anderson, in the guise of post office telephone engineers, are on their way to Kramer's house in the hope that they can gain entrance to the place and sabotage the secret weapon. This will allow Colonel Gardner and his men to attack. Meanwhile, Kramer is trying out the secret weapon and the antidote. Blom, the halfwit, has been instructed in their use and is directing the rays at Snowy and Wrangle. Wrangle has been protected with the antidote, but Snowy White has not. Sorry about this, my boy. Not your fault, sir. Will it help if I close my eyes? I'm afraid not. Oh, well, it hasn't been a bad old life. <laughs> Here it comes. Pull. Lever. So. <laughs> I can't feel anything, can you? Shh. The ray doesn't operate until the third switch is pulled down. Blom's only pulled down two. Do you know? What? I believe she's forgotten the third switch. Look at him. He thinks because the generator's making a noise that the machine is working. <laughs> you die. Look, here's your chance. Eh? Pretend your eyes hurt you. Pretend you're in agony. Scream. Yes, make them think the weapon is working. Oh, I get you. Here. Oh, oh, my eyes. You swines. What have you done to me eyes? They hurt. I can't see. Wrangle, Wrangle, do something. Do something for me. I can't see. I can do nothing, my boy. <laughs> Trauma, so good. Please, please help me for heaven's sake. Keep it up. Blink your eyes hard to make the tears come. Then keep them shut. Wrangle, Wrangle, I'm blind. I can't see anymore. What can I do? Shut up, man. <laughs> it worked, Kramer. It worked. You unspeakable swine, Kramer. What's the matter, Wrangle? You're all right, aren't you? Yes, but this man is blind and condemned to a lingering death and any other unfortunate people who were in line with the ray. Excellent. I could have hoped for nothing better. Why do you join us, Wrangle, you fool? Together, the three of us will control the whole world. I'd rather you directed the ray at me and let me die. Very noble, but unutterably foolish. Still, why waste time talking? I would have liked to have had Wrangle with us. Why? Before we parted company, we'd begun to work together on a new interplanetary rocket. My dear Thurgood, you will have quite enough to cope with on this planet, once we are the masters, without travelling to Mars or Jupiter. Can't you do something for me, I, sir? Please, I can't see. And I'm afraid you will never see again. Will he, uh, No. <laughs> Not only that, but I fear that the action of a ray upon the eyes is only the first uh, symptom. So from the eyes, the effects travel to the brain. It takes some little time. Uh, and I'm afraid we shan't be able to wait to see those effects, Mr. Wright. If I could only get my hands round your throat just for a minute, I... But you can't. Blum, <laughs> you've done very well. <laughs> now take these two men and throw them in the cellar, out of their way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think we should take Wrangle with us? No, he'll only be a continual nuisance and a possible menace to our safety. Now take them both away, Blom. Men like you always come to the same unpleasant type of end, Kramer. Keep your mouth shut, you old fool. Get them out of here, Blom. <laughs> where, are you? Where, where are you, Wrangle? I can't see you. Give me something for me eyes. Anything. Now what? Go and fix this weapon in the plane, ready for action. We strike at once, then? As soon as we can. I'll give instructions for the path to be cleared from the plane to the runway on the airfield. I must confess, I'm expecting cars loaded with police to arrive at any moment. Yes, there is that possibility, but uh, we can be ready for them, I think. With this weapon? We could use that weapon, but it complicates matters. I think we might prepare a little surprise packet somewhere in the drive, just in case. Now, let me see. I think... Get what you wanted from that ordnance depot, Mr. Barton. Yes, Doc. Here. Take a look. Recognize it? Whew. I'll say I do. Useful sort of thing to have around. What do you intend doing with it? Well, it depends on what happens at Kramer's place. But it may come in handy before the morning's out. Let's just run over the plan of campaign again, eh? Well, we're nearly there now. This is what we do. Once we're inside the grounds, we'll take a walk round the house, pretend to be following the telephone wires. 
If we can get a line on the place where the secret weapon's located, and I suspect it'll be in the plane by now, ready for moving off, then I'll have a bash at sabotaging it. But what if the weapon is in the plane and the plane is under a strong guard? In that case, I shall leave you outside and I shall go inside and see if I can collar the antidote. And if that's already in the plane under the guard? Oh, you think of everything, don't you? Just as well to look ahead? Well, if we can't get at the weapon or the antidote, we'll just have to kill Kramer and Thurgood. How? Oh. Preferably with our bare hands. The more I think about it, the better I like the idea of killing those they two. They sound the right sort of people to kill. What's the time now? Half past ten. And this is the road we want. Now listen, Jock. If I should be inside the house, or separated from you for any reason... I? Well, you take the very pistol, and if I can grab the antidote or sabotage the weapon, as soon as I've done that, it'll be safe for Colonel Gardner to attack. How shall I know? I'll whistle this tune. I get you. As soon as I hear that tune, I fire the very light. That's it. And don't hang about from then on, because I shouldn't be surprised if things don't start to warm up. You surely don't expect me to clear off and leave me, do you? Of course. Don't hang about whatever you do. Oh, no, you don't. I'll stick around till we're both out. Much better if... Hello, here we are. Here's the house. Now, let me do most of the talking. Okay. Here. Look, Mr. Barton. They're digging the drive up. Hi. Mate. You there, Cocky! Well? Can we come up the blinking drive? No, you cannot. Well, we've got to. We've come to fix a phone. We have got a phone. We do not want any more. This is Ashwell Court, isn't it? Yes. Then this is the place. Drive on, Jock. I tell you, we do not want a phone. And in any case, you cannot come up this drive. We are working on it. Look, I've got the order here in black and white, and I've got my instructions too. Here they are. I ain't leaving yet till I've seen the boss. Well, you cannot drive the van up this drive because we are working on it. Okay. Well, walk up your blooming drive. We ain't passy. Come on, Jock. Add. Bring the tools. Right. Give us a hand, will you? Of course. Give me that thing, Jock. This is a nuisance. It can't be helped. Here, put it in the tool bag. That's a lot. That's a lot. Here it goes, then. i better come with you. That's all right, Mike. We can find our way to the front door. I dare say. But our boss does not like strangers snooping around the joint. What do you mean, snooping? We've come here to fix a telephone. It won't take us ten minutes. Well, very well. Come with me. But do not tread any more on this drive. Cool. Bit fussy about your drive, ain't you? Won't hurt to tread on it, will it? Yes, it will. Come on. Keep on the grass. All right, all right. We'll stay off your drive. Don't worry. Come on, Jock, sooner we get this here job over and done with, the better. Don't seem to like us here. We do not like strangers. No, you stay outside here while I go and see the boss. OK, tell him it won't take us more than ten minutes. Yeah, better take the correspondence as well. All right, give it to me. Now, you stay here and do not go snooping around. Don't worry, mate. Well, so far so good. Yes. Take a look over here, Jock. There's the shed with the plane in it. Aye, and there's about six chaps hanging around outside the door. Keep looking up, Jock, as though you're studying the telephone wires, just in case there's anybody watching us. If the weapon's already mounted inside that plane, we've had it. You'll never break through that bunch in the door. No, I guess you're right. That means we've got to get inside. Don't look now, but somebody's watching us from a window. Well, they'll no recognise us. I'll go in first, leaving you outside. As soon as you get a chance to take our little surprise packet out of the tool bag, put it under that bush. This bush by the window? Yes, tuck it out of sight. We may need it later. Look, what is all this? What sort of men are they, and why were they let in? I thought it would be best to bring them in. I did not want them getting suspicious. We don't want a phone anyway. There's a mistake somewhere. Oh, it's quite understandable. This letter explains it. The previous tenant ordered an extra phone, and it's just become available. Well, explain the mistake to the mans. Where are the men? Outside, sir. You can see them from this window. Where? Oh, yes, I see. Oh, they seem all right. <laughs> it isn't friend Barton, anyway. Oh, tell them we don't want an extra phone and let them go. Yes, sir. Have you finished that little job in the drive? Yes, sir, it is all finished. Good. Splendid. And it looks as though we're practically ready then, sir. Yes, practically ready. Here he comes, Jock. Right. me! Thought you'd gone on your holidays, chum. There has been a mistake. And this phone was ordered by the man who lived here nine months ago, a man named uh, Parkinson. That's the name, yes, Parkinson. Well, he has left. Present owner is a man named Harris. Well, blimey, do you that, Jock? Ain't that just like our people? Yeah. Send us here on a wild goose chase? Come on, then. Oh, half a minute. Say, chum, would your boss mind if we used your phone just for a minute? 
I'll ring our people up, you see, they'll tell us where to take the thing. Save us going all the way back to the depot, see? There is a phone box just outside the gate. Oh, yes, so there is. Well, if your boss will just sign this form and say we call... Oh, 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 I've dropped it. There it is behind you, chum. Pick it up and let your boss see it. What do you think I am? A... Back into the side. Quick, Jock, in the bushes. Right. You just stick around here and look innocent. Where are you going? Inside the house. Here goes. Don't let them see you from the window, and if I give the signal, fire that very pistol and run like the devil. I'll be right after you. All right, Mr. Barton. Just as you say. I think we're all right. The men on the drive can't see us here. What's your plan? As agreed. Try for the weapon or the antidote. If not, I shall kill Kramer. Good luck. I'll keep this monkey wrench. It might come in useful. Right, here I go. So, my dear Thurgood, we stand on the threshold of our adventure. Everything is ready. And the weapon is in the plane, already mounted for action. Then the sooner we get off, the better. Listen, Jock. All the men have had their instructions on how to get out of this country and where to rendezvous in two weeks' time. Then, in case we have to operate the weapon and to be on the safe side, we should both use the antidote, I think. So should the pilot of the plane. Yes. In that case, Blom can take the antidote over to the plane and we can apply it when we're in the air. I'll send him across with it now. Blom? Blom, come here a minute. What's happening, Mr. Barton? They're calling Blom. They're going to give him the antidote to take over to the plane. It couldn't have worked better. You mean we'll get him as he comes out? Yes. Flatten yourself against the wall by this door. That's it. As he comes out, I'll let him have it. <laughs> nice work, Mr. Barton. That's the stuff we want. Grand. Now then, you take it and get cracking, Jock. Dodge through the bushes and then fire the very light. What about you? I'll hold friends Kramer and Thurgood. Go on, beat it I quick. Don't like the That's an order. Beat it. And when you fire the very light, make sure they don't spot you. Okay. I'll see you later. Yes. Things appear to have worked out very well, Kramer. Yes, very well. It's a pity we shan't be here to see the reception which Barton and Gardner will get. What? Ah. <laughs> Were you ah. arranging a special reception for me, will it? No, keep your hands well up. And you, Brother Thurgood. Oh. Ah, in the nick of time again, eh, Barton? And disguise, too? How very amusing. Yes, in the nick of time, as ever. With lots of reinforcements? All in good time. Oh, don't tell me you've come here without reinforcements again, my dear Barton, really. I don't think we've overlooked any possibilities this time, Willie. I'm afraid you've overlooked just one, Barton. I don't think so. <coughs> well done, Blom. Well done. Kill. No, Blom. No, 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 no. Kill. Don't kill him. Kill. Not just for a moment. Hold his arms behind his back, Blom. <coughs> That's it. <coughs> Golly. Oh, what a nasty grip you've got, Blom. Yeah. And what a devil of a thick skull you must have. You know, you amaze me, Barton. What the... Why, look! A very light. A warning. Yes, you've had it, Willie, old son. Listen. But this is perfect, Thurgood. Huh? Here we are, all ready to get off in the plane with the weapon, and Barton turns up so that we can finish him off. And here, I'll be bound, a cars full of police. And, of course, Colonel Garth. Precisely, Willie. And, of course, the lady friend. Possibly. Excellent. Now, before we kill you off, Barton, you can wait with us and watch the cars come roaring up the drive. You see, I have had it specially mined in readiness for them. Is Kramer speaking the truth? Will Gardiner and Jean be blown up? Will Kramer and Thurgood escape? Listen to the next installment of Dick Burton, Special Agent. <laughs>